Thanks guys for joining me in my next video. If you're joining me for the first time, I talk politics and Bible from a conservative female perspective. Let's get into today's video, which is female honor. Now, I don't know what you guys have seen or anything like that, but um, I watch all kinds of stuff on the internet and just one of the things I actually end up watching is these guys. They're called Fresh and Fit. I'm not sure which one's which, sorry, but <laughs> that's just the way it is. Um, the tall guy talks all the time about how, you know, women don't have honor. They don't have this, that, or the other. But, you know, it's mostly true for his area and for the people he chooses to associate with. Um, but it's not true in the idea that there is no honor for a woman like there's no definition of it and i think it, i tried to find it but in one podcast i think he said that women don't need it that's why they don't bother with it men need it to exist in society and you know i obviously don't agree with that being a christian there is an honorable woman and a dishonorable woman just like there's an honorable man and a dishonorable man for women and men honor does look different but it is there so I thought to myself, well, how would I lay that out? Or what would that even look like? How would I even explain that to someone? You know, what, what it looks like from a Christian perspective. So I did some digging. And that's why this is in the Bible study section. <laughs> so uh, so the first thing I did was, like, okay, let's define it, right? What What is honor? I don't, I don't remember if he did or not. I don't recall that. So <clears throat> let's see if I can find the right one. They're going to go away for a second and this one yes honor right so honor high respect great esteem adherence to what is right or a conventional standard of conduct and then you can do it as a verb hi kitty <laughs> um to fulfill an obligation or keep an agreement to regard with great respect so already here is already honesty truthfulness adherence to what is good and right Okay, as decided by a convention. So in Christianity, it would be adherence to what God says. So keep that in mind as I talk, because adherence to what God says is a big deal. <clears throat> okay, so I thought, all right, so that's an interesting, just general one. And then here is honor as laid out in sort of the definitions of the words that the Bible uses, right? So the Old Testament is kabod, while in the New Testament is tamal. And these are general terms, right? Uh, this says... They're general terms with a reference to the honor granted to fellow human beings, though in some cases they are used to describe the honor a person grants God. But, but mostly it's between people. So kabod has a literal and figurative meaning. Literally means heavy or weighty. Figu figuratively, it means to give weight to someone. To honor someone that is to give weight or to grant a person a position of respect and even authority in one's life. And you know the difference between these people in your life. Uh, honor is an internal attitude of respect, courtesy, and reverence and should be accompanied by appropriate attention or even obedience. Okay, so that, that right there comes from, there are certain relationships like the marriage one where there's a level of obedience. And then if you're going to honor God, it says, if you love me or you want to honor me, then you obey my commandments. So keeping that in mind. Okay. Um, this says within human government, I do in a way honor human government because I'm not like, I'm not always burn it all down <laughs> because God did create government. I just, right now I'm having a problem. <laughs> But uh, you, you are supposed to pray for them. You're supposed to, when they're doing, you know, what they're supposed to do, you know, give them that honor. So, uh, let's see. I don't know where else this is going. But basically, so, so far we've gotten honest, does the right thing. Um, and then that is defined for me, or if I was going to explain this to somebody, as adherence to the, what the Bible says. And... Um, just here's what the Bible says and just a generally good person <laughs> basically but not only that so so how do I say this okay so the Bible when it talks about a good woman a righteous woman an honorable woman it talks about 
not just sort of like characteristics she should have, but also the way she looks. So I'm going to play like a slideshow for you guys about what an honorable woman looks like. So you can kind of see where I'm coming from here. It is all different, different colors, different styles, different everything. But what you will see here is that the, the, um, <laughs> how do I say this? The theme is the same. So let me get, let me get these pictures on here. And it's not working. Okay. I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, the power of editing, we are back. So I just wanted to go and show these images. I'm gonna go down and show them as I talk, okay? Because basically, how does a woman, what, what's a woman do to become honorable? And that's to do weighty things, right? So in this instance, you know, you've seen these ladies, they're all dressed modestly and they're not, um, they're not out there, you know, shaking their butt. They're not out there doing things. Whoops. They're not out there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> they're not out there doing things that would be, um, embarrassing. They're, they're out there. Uh, they're not out there trying to get a man with just their body, right? It's not about their body, basically. So that is what modesty is in Christianity. Christianity, you are modest for yourself and for God and for that relationship. It has other things to do with it, but basically you are modest for yourself and God. And because this keeps you in a traditional mindset, right? So the Bible talks about, about, um, tradition, uh, honor, sorry, <laughs> two different ways. One, what you do, which is again, Proverbs 31 and, um, and then a little bit of Luke 1, 28 through 38. Hi kitty. Sorry. <laughs> and then what you don't do as well, what a, what a non-righteous or non-honorable woman looks like is also in Proverbs. Okay. And so it's, it's all the way through Proverbs. We've got Proverbs chapter two, chapter five, chapter six, chapter seven, chapter nine. Then we have contrasting, uh, showing like the contrast between the women in chapter 12 and chapter 14. So there is a lot there and I'll leave this all down, either a comment or, you know, the little bit underneath, <laughs> but, um, just to go kind of go through it again, honorable woman is educated to household purpose, which, can, which generally means she's not when, if she goes to an official school, she's going to a school for like culinary, or she's going to a school for maybe a business degree or something like that. Something, um, that is going to help her in her household in her side hustle in, um, you know, maybe she'll take child care development of some kind, you know, early child care development because you're going to have, um, children, <laughs> you know, um, these are things that will help her not only in her household, but help the church, etc. like that. Um, she's hardworking, so she's not lazy. She's not laying around. She's not walking around, going other places. She's not doing things that, that she's minding her own business, things like that. Right. She's future thinking again, you know, if you're future thinking, you're looking forward to, Hey, I'm going to need this in maybe two or three years. I need to start doing it now. She's steady as a rock. You don't have to worry about her. She's, if you are, if a, if a man leaves his house for weeks and weeks and weeks, he still knows that everything is going to be fine. You can run the house. You're good. You can run this life basically honest. I don't think this one needs to be explained. If you're not an honest person, people can't rely on you. And that, that means you're not steady as a rock organized. You got to be organized to run things <laughs> peaceful, or sometimes people say submissive that can be quite, you know, triggering for people, but basically she's not out there to start a fight. She's not, she's part of a team. She recognizes and realizes that. And the leader of the team is the husband. Okay. So she's not trying to make it not her, right? She's trying to say, okay, let's work together and get this done. Right. And she's a builder. And she's serious. Now I say a builder and not in the way of like, she's out there building, you know, houses or something, but she's a builder as in she is trying to build up her household to be ready for when the storms come. She's out there building up her family to be ready when the storms come. When the Bible talks about her household, okay, it talks about 
her maidservants and her kids and all this stuff. If you're not married, still to be an honorable woman or someone who will gain that title of honorable, you're looking out for your general family as well. Cousins, aunts, grandparents, great-grandparents, um, your children's aunt and uncles, your children's even friends, even if you can in a, in a limited way, right? But mainly, that, that's what she's doing. This, this whole idea is that you are this powerhouse in the home, really de helping everyone develop into who they can really be. Now, um, a lot of people think that that's not honorable. They, they, they think that's not worth doing it. But really, if you think about it, these women, an honorable woman does weighty things that change the world just by being that homemaker and encouraging people to do the best that they can. Whatever that looks like, maybe that doesn't look like, you know, a business job. Maybe that looks more like, how can I say this? Maybe it looks more like the trades. You want to make sure that your family is being treated correctly in this trade situation. You want to make sure they're doing everything that they can to make the most that they can and do the best and, and still be balanced where they're home and they have rest time and things like that. That they're attending church, things like that. So that is what an honorable woman looks like. She is uh, the, the, I can't remember the name of this rock, in uh, whenever you're looking at at stone striation back there like uh, this the Indian lady is back there she has the stones back there a woman is this is a one of the stones of the household you can stand on them you know what they're gonna do you don't have to worry about when you come home or if strange things gonna be there or strange people <laughs> if you as a woman are looking at this like well what is you know what's honor and all this stuff that's what it is you're dependable, strong, intelligent, you know, you are, but also know who the boss is. You know, that's part of being intelligent. It's probably part of being strong, believe it or not. Um, you're honest, organized, you're building to a better future for everyone around you. If you're serious, now this doesn't mean you can't cut up and have fun, but you know when it's time to be serious. You're not flighty, basically. And these obviously are things that you, you work towards. You know, you don't just pop out an honorable woman. You have to be trained how to do it. You have to know how to do it. Okay. So honorable woman or honor for women. That's what it looks like. It's household centered. It's family and people centered. And that's why when I say household, that's really what I mean. It's your people centered. Okay. It's not the building. It's the people. It never in Christianity. It's never the building. It's always the people. Okay. So when you think about this. When I thought about this, I'm like, he's talking about, I wish I could find it. I cannot find it. But he was talking one time that women don't need honor because they're already born with some kind of, um, <laughs> what did he say? Dang. They don't need to pursue honor because they're already born with value because they can have children. That's what it is. And I obviously disagree with that. I mean, just because you can have kids with somebody doesn't mean that they have a value in your life. So whatever. Anyway, it put me down this rabbit hole. And so I was able to put this out. So guys, um, this is just what I've been thinking about for various different reasons. <laughs> but, you know, you let me know what you think down in the comments. If you think I'm straight on track, great. I'd love to hear that. If you think I'm stupid, if you Great. I'd love to hear that too. If you think I've missed something, let me know. Um, but guys, ultimately an honorable woman is a woman who wants to follow God and his ways that are in the Bible. So I'd like to just remind you today to pray and read your Bible and I will see you in the next one. Bye.